Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tire. Dirt, late model, dirt modified, and big block modified talk now on MRN.com. Here now are David and Ashley. Happy Tuesday, y'all. It is why I'm sorry my voice is a little sketchy from this Eldora, weekend. Eldora, Eldora Eldora Hangover. Speedway. <laughs> we have a fabulous show on board for you. As always, we have Dale McDowell, your Lucas Oil Dixie Shootout winner at Dixie Speedway. Lucas Schott, he is the Grant Younghands Memorial winner. And last but not least, we have the president of World Racing Group, Tom Deary, joining us. So wow. I'm sure we'll talk about... Oswego and the Dirt Track World Finals and the Short Track Championships and everything else that's happening. No tire lawsuits. No tire lawsuits. So not everything. No, We're not, not doing everything. that. That's true. Well, speaking of tires. Um, Uh-oh, now what? You act like you don't know this. I showed this oh, to you yes, an hour yes. ago. It's so new. I, it really <laughs> I, yeah, hasn't exactly. sunk in. Um, so it's new as of today, a few hours ago. Um, Hoosier has sold out to Continental Tire. Um, as of right now, everything will stay in place. Hoosier will still be Hoosier. But uh, Joyce Newton, the, the fearless leader behind Hoosier Tire, um, has decided to sell out. So sad to hear that, but glad to hear that everything will stay structure-wise in place for Hoosier. Well, I, I think um, there's so many questions, uh, but for a lot of people that don't know, Continental and Hoosier is, have worked together over the years uh, in the Grand Am American Series, uh, a lot of the road race and stuff, so... Uh, obviously working together and, and acquiring it is a is a smart business move but it's going to be interesting to see what plays out of a lot of it because anytime you have you have uh, companies forming together there's always cuts here and there and they said everybody's sure. going to stay the same yeah. so we'll see I know for me I have a lot of friends that work there and I hope uh, that they'll all be safe and I'm sure they will because they know their their business and and the work but um, it'll be interesting to see as it comes forward uh, over the years uh, what will happen mm-hmm um, some other big news uh, that everybody's kind of freaking out about. Um, What's this? They don't really know the story behind it. You kind of filled me in on the story. Uh, uh -oh. Volusia Speedway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I call this? What's that? Bad media. Bad media. Well, Roll I out. think, yeah, I, I because... think it's more of people just don't really understand and me being one of them. Okay, so I will explain as I sure. explained to her. There's some a group that had rented the track. They after, leased the track. Yeah, yes. lease lease rented whatever. Um, at World Racing Group owns the track. Uh, the Gator Nationals will go on in 2017 and mm -hmm. years beyond, which is great because it is a very successful event during speed weeks. But um, they've rented the track out or leased it uh, the past few years. But if they don't, because I remember this, because the surface it changes a little bit. They throw grass on it like Charlotte did over here, and they'll let it sit all year. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess if somebody would be interested in uh, leasing it, get a hold of World Racing Group because they'll they'll probably lease it out. And it's it's the same you see in at Paducah. Paducah, um, yes. you know, they the, those people said, hey, we're not going to lease it anymore. I talked to Schrader. Obviously him and a, a few other guys own it, and he said there's people talking about buying it, leasing it. So... You know, if you have the idea of wanting to be a track promoter, uh, promoter <laughs> uh, go ahead. But go after this go weekend, ahead. after this weekend, I didn't. You know, we went to Eldora, and I'm, I'm, tr I've been trying to think of how I'm going to say this. Uh, we went to Eldora. The Hold forecast. On. Can, I, can I preface this real quick? What's that? <laughs> so we're not. I, I want everyone to understand that we are not bashing the track. Hang on, you don't even know what I'm going to say. I do know what you're going to say. Go ahead. She doesn't. So, anyways. I do. We knew the forecast was crazy all weekend long. It's a back gate race to where we don't get a lot of fans. Sure. They do get a lot of cars. On an average, about 140 cars. There's 105 cars showed up. Uh, Thursday's forecast, it was clear all day, rained at night uh, for a little while, and then it stopped. We could have probably raced, but to run equipment and do everything is just not uh, financially smart for the situation. We had two more days. Anyways, long story short, we got Friday's races in, Saturday, most of them, 14 laps to go in a late mile race, and uh, the bottom fell out. So uh, we had a six-hour delay. They um, decided they were going to go race again. On my part of the racetrack, I understand the position they were in. We got to get the show in. We only have a race and an eighth of a race left. Um, let's stay till 4 in the morning. But on the other hand, they also preached safety at the driver's meeting, and it was very unsafe conditions. Fortunately, everybody, uh, nobody got hurt. There was half the field pulled off in a modified half race. So 
congratulations, Jacob Hawkins, uh, mm -hmm. on his win. Uh, but Jacob was all against uh, the the race uh, going on. He says, I got yeah. kid, I got all this stuff. But from a standpoint, I understand where the track's from. I made my own decision. I was done. I, I am not, as I put it, mad at my money. And uh, I just parked it. And we uh, watched the race as cars were very... Uh, muddy it will say that but anyways it was interesting because i had a flashback when all the drivers were in the infield and um they were saying hey we're not going to race and you need to talk to so guys i had a flashback to talladega in oh, 19 God. whatever 60 something when oh. when all the drivers said we're going too fast and all were this other born stuff then? no but i okay. always heard about it <laughs> so i was like i could see where bill france was at a predicament and said we're racing no matter what and there's guys that race and guys that didn't. So, um, anyways, it was quite the weekend. I'm sure that's not the only place that that happens at, but um, it was it was interesting, and especially from my standpoint of understanding the track side, a racer side, it was very frustrating. So, in all, everybody uh, took it in the rear end over the weekend, and <laughs> and uh, hopefully next year the event is back to what it is always so well, I didn't I think, bash anybody well no but I just knew where you were going with it and ultimately it can kind of twist that way especially when you get talking about it because you get rather heated about things there's things but, I'll tell you the only thing pissed me off oh here we go <laughs> was <laughs> when we go into the racetrack oh, Michael the Simpson Nazis. I'm gonna tell you Michael Simpson was a guy's name the one parking guy <laughs> the one guy he was a total asshole because we pull in and he is just so rude from the beginning. And I was like the 15th hauler in. So it's not like I was the 90th hauler in where this guy's <laughs> mad. And I just Maybe feel that <laughs> I'm like, I just paid to get in here and you're going to talk to me like you just did. I was, that's why I asked his name. He didn't want to tell me. But the other guy was fine. We were, you know, we were asking questions like, hey, you know, uh, but it was to me. It goes both ways. I need a place to go race. They need me to come race. That's right. But I just got there and to be talked like that, and that's probably the thing that makes me more mad than anything. So that's the only thing that upset me, besides the drunk that wanted to lay on me and, and put his arm around me, and I had to kind of straighten that out because I don't, I just don't like drunks. Oh, so. goodness gracious. Juan, I will tell yes, you this, everybody. Juan found a new home. Juan went home, <laughs> and it was the craziest thing because there's these girls that were looking for Juan, and then there's other... and. We, uh, uh, Mike Harrison's group, who he won, congratulations to him, the only the five time that's right, uh, UMP modified uh, points winner. Uh, they went home with him to celebrate, so it was interesting. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to talk to our next guest, and we'll talk about his celebration this weekend. It is Dale McDowell coming up next here on Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tires on MRN.com. Sling and Dirt returns in one minute on MRN.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. A dead battery can leave you stranded, so get yours tested for free during Superstart Battery Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Need a replacement? Purchase a Superstart Extreme or Superstart Platinum battery and get up to $25 in O'Reilly gift cards after a mail-in rebate. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. From work life to night life, from home to the road, your day can take you anywhere. These fast-paced times call for Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. Advanced Comfort is designed to keep up with you, no matter where you go or what you're doing. They're made with 20% stronger denim and four-way flex technology that moves with you. Wrangler Advanced Comfort. Go anywhere, look great, and be comfortable. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. Try on a pair today. This is power. This is freedom. This is tradition. It's Dale Earnhardt with the lead. This is being who you were meant to be, where you were meant to be. This is more than a race. This is Talladega. The chase for the NASCAR Spring Cup returns October 21st through 23rd. Call 1-877-GO-TO-DEGA for tickets. This is Slingin' Dirt on MRN.com. Now back to Ashley and David Streming. 
Welcome back to Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules. Hey, <laughs> hey before we get uh, McDowell in here, you know it's a bad day when the track packer cars run out of gas. Yeah. You know, you can, you know yeah. like, maybe you shouldn't go race on it. But the, anyways. The bet, are you going to tell that story? No, because I want to talk oh, to okay. McDowell. All right. I thought you were, so I was excited there for a minute. No. Anyhow, we are going to talk to the Lucas Oil Dixie shootout winner. It is Dale McDowell. Welcome back to the show, Dale. Hey, guys. How are you? We are well. How about yourself? I can be better. Absolutely. So I know that, um, you know, you picked up the win. You're 12 grand richer at Dixie. Talk a little bit about what went on that evening. Uh, well, we've uh, I've actually, actually the racetrack uh, it was quite different than it normally has been there. They uh, prepared it a little different. And so it caught us off guard just a little bit. So we started back. Uh, I think I started ninth. And um, so as I started driving up through there, it, it really surprised me. Uh, you know, that we actually uh, was able to drive back up through there that quick. And um, so uh, a, fun, a few things happened on the double file restarts. Uh, they're usually very, very uh, uh, line dominant down there, usually the bottom of the racetrack. And I was hung out on the top on a double file restart, and I'm thinking, oh, no, my night's over. So under caution, I was trying to make a deal with Scott and get him to pick outside, and, and he didn't know what I was talking about. And uh, – so I said, heck with it, I'm going to try. And I ended up taking the lead on the outside. So you never know. In our sport, you never know what's going to happen. Well, I, I'm going to brag on you a little bit because I heard your car was phenomenal, not only handling, but they said you drove it so perfect compared to everybody else of uh, considering conditions that you were passing guys, like as you had just said, on the outside doing different things. You've been running this Bloomquist car, a uh, sweet Bloomquist car, since uh, I had seen you run it at the uh, Ray Cook Summer National Race. What is yeah. some of the things, uh, have you had to adjust your driving style? Have you had to change a lot uh, with going to, with this new car? Not really. I mean, it's, um, they put a little bit, I, I think, Scott, when we started talking about doing this program at the end of last year, um, he had some ideas and things he wanted to change, and things that he can't change really out there racing for points, um, you know, with following the Lucas series. So, so they did some, some different things, so a few different things on my car a little bit. Um, and so it's, um, they're reacting a little, a little different. I mean, we're, the cars are very, they're, they're real similar as far as, as far as a, a basic standard car. But I think some of the things that they've changed, um, the characteristics change a little bit as far as uh, changing when it gets slick or, or when it's wet and fast. So we're still struggling just a little bit knowing what direction to go to do that. And I think some of that's me. You know, Dave, how you, when you get in something different and you're driving it different, mm -hmm. it likes a different set of changes some, sometimes. And yep. so, um, uh, you know, some of the stuff, we've been very, very successful in it. And, uh, and he and I have been, you know, able to um, – to, even if we're not race the same place, uh, you know, on our way back or something, we'll have a discussion on the phone to where, what did you change? What did you feel? You know, what are you having to do in the car, um, you know, under certain track conditions? So mm -hmm. that part's been great. And that's that was what we were looking for, you know, is being able to, to have somebody to work with, you know, and actually be able to, to learn from it. And, uh, and his, mine and his driving styles are very similar mm -hmm. i guess growing growing up here you know in the same area so to speak um uh, and and racing these racetracks our driving style is similar so we're able to communicate and um uh, and, and apply it so yeah uh, well, that's that's been helpful you know it, it's interesting um you see uh as, as we had seen this weekend you know chris madden was getting into dun benson ford with with uh, uh earl pearson jr they yep. they work a little bit w through their chassis uh, brand. You see some others. Mm -hmm. Is that what kind of made you? Uh, because you were with Warrior for a long time. Uh, said, hey, we need to kind of work with a few guys, uh, and and you went towards Scott's way, or what? What kind of leaned you towards his way? Well, we, uh, I mean, he he actually we talked at Knoxville, Iowa last year, and um, and and started talking there and. And basically, I mean, Warrior had a, they and still have a good product. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, as as well as I do, if you get guys that you can communicate well with, yep, it seems to move in positive directions. Um, and I know that you see this, 
you know, and, and with what you guys are doing with the modifieds and building cars, it's so hard sometimes to make adjustments around a guy's driving style. Yep. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I think, you know, when you're trying to, when you're trying to uh, learn something as competitive as, as all forms of racing is, especially, you know, with what I see in dirt racing, you know, it's, um, you just, you've almost got to have something to where you can work with. Well, Shane and I, my brother Shane and I, what we struggled with, we'd go places and we would be good with what we had learned over the years. But if we were off, Mm -hmm. we had nobody to turn to and say, all right, where are you at? Yeah. You know, what, what direction have you been going? And, um, you know, the very first time I ran the car, we, we ended up winning the race. We are fortunate enough to win the race. Um, Jared Landers, which was in a book, was car run second. Scott ran third. And surprisingly, all three of us were somewhat different. Not yeah. hugely, but just yep. a little different here, a little different there. So I think that combination, number one, if I see Jared driving the car a certain way and I know where he's at setup wise, mm-hmm. it'll make me adjust my driving style instead of work on my race car. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think that's helped, you know, and, and, uh, but the communication, if you can communicate, you know, with, with someone, it, it seems to move in positive directions and that's what we were looking for. And, and, uh, it's been, it's been good. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely, you see, uh, to me, uh, groups, uh, and, and we have it with some of our customers where, uh, we communicate so well, uh, and, and everybody's driving style is different, you can kind of all, you can achieve the goal faster. Um, and it's such a moving target. We see it throughout uh, all the motorsports. And you see it right now in dirt racing. It used to be one guy would go and, uh, hey, I got my own little niche, and I'm going to go out and I'm racing against everybody. I want nobody to know. Now you see groups working together. And um, – it, it, it's definitely a little more powerful, I'd say, uh, when you have that. But it's also a, a balancing act because of driving styles. What What is some of the things that you see, uh, just say from a racer and a track owner's standpoint through dirt racing, that is at the something they need to address that's at the top? Well, I mean, it, it's we we I think we had this conversation last time that we. Oh, we did. I just want to see if it's changed any. <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, I, I think it's it's the same. I mean, I think we, um, I mean, at our place here in Chattanooga, at, at, at our racetrack, uh, we all were searching to 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 keep the cars as equal as you can. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they're doing some of that since since you and I have talked about that. I think they've made some gains in, in some of the tire uh, combinations that they're running and what you can do to them, grooving and siping and and things like that. So, you know, I, I think that kind of equalizes out everything a little bit, makes it a little bit more simple. I mm-hmm. um, think it makes it maybe a little bit more cost efficient. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's a it's a constant balance between doing things, you know, for the racers and keep everything equal, but yet still put a good show on because Man. some of those things that when we put all the cars the same, sometimes the show's not as good. Yep. Mm-hmm. And... Mm-hmm. You know, so you're you're trying to help in one area, and you know maybe hurt in another area, and so uh, and that's not always the case, but but uh, you know it, it seems to be you have to be careful in that aspect. But you know this this the 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 cost of of the local racing, uh, you know try to keep it under control so yeah. people are are uh, are okay with putting you know their their kid in it or or doing it themselves and you know and, and have it affordable and. Uh, so, I mean, that's one thing, you know, with the mods, that I know that you guys see a lot of young talent, you know, uh, come up, and it's more family-oriented now, which I love to see that. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of good things yeah. going on in there, but we got to be careful, you know, as we yeah. make adjustments and stuff uh, that we just don't uh, do you, uh, hurt ourselves. Do you uh, – got two questions. Do the sanctioned bodies um, ask you your opinion because you, you – have a lot of different experience at different levels um second of all is as you talk about younger guys coming in i think um you know a transition in different they have different levels to be able to go up unlike other uh racing uh atmospheres i guess you'd say uh, uh but more than anything i'm just, i'm just curious because i know there is a builders or manufacturers where they kind of get together but to me i i think you 
need to be able to kind of go out and talk to other people and get their opinions on stuff? I think the, the sanctioning bodies, um, I mean, we've, we've gone through, I mean, I won't get into in the specifics of everything, but we've yeah. gone through some things, you know, in the past in some marquee races that maybe the sanctioning bodies have made a decision on that really wasn't the right decision. Mm -hmm. I think that they need to go to car builders, you know, if, if there's a question on something, that they need to pick up the phone and call and talk to two or three car builders, you know, and say, okay, is this okay or is this not okay? Is this is this within our rules, you know, or is this not within our rules? Sometimes I think, you know, they'll talk to us, you know, and, and sometimes I think that they listen, and sometimes I think they just talk to us to make us feel better. <laughs> yeah. Do they even talk to you, as a say, from a promoter side? They do. I mean, they have, you know, um, uh, we don't run late models every week. We run big late model shows here, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm not, I'm not able to to actually jump in there and help. I, I feel like, you know, some tire uh, questions or situations and, and, and things, but they do, you know. And, and you know, like as far as the, the younger racers coming in, they in our sport today, the learning curve is – less than half of what it was when when I started racing um, simply because there's so many different outlets and avenues and chassis manufacturers and stuff that'll help you and direct you you know uh, down a path to where it would take me three or four years to learn something that a guy can learn in a year and a half now yeah um, you know so there's there's a lot of that but in saying all that um, you know the, the expense level you know is is uh, that's what we as on the promoter side, I hear, you know, it's awfully expensive. It's awfully expensive, and, and it is, you know, especially when the economy, um, you know, took took a, a hard hit, you know, several years back, you know. So we were, we're creating more classes to accommodate, uh, but as racing advanced, the cost advanced with it, you know, yeah. and uh, so we're having to back up and, you know, and create some classes. But what's crazy is the older A hobby, B hobby, street stock type stuff. Um, the cost of that stuff is, is up now where, you know, years back it, it was it was cheaper. So a lot of your stock stuff is, is um, a lot of time consuming and people are putting a price on the labor of, of building one of those cars and you know, so it's uh it's escalated a little bit. But uh uh it's it's a it's a definite game that you gotta study and you're trying to look out for you know, for both sides, uh, yep. the race fans. And the racers. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Dale, you mentioned earlier you talked about family. Your brother Shane's your crew chief. But after reading this weekend's press press release, I thought something was really unique. You talked about losing your mother five years ago, but Dixie was her favorite racetrack. How involved was she with what you're racing, and why did she love Dixie so much? Our mother, if we wanted to take a weekend off, or if we wanted to take something off, we weren't allowed. We had to go race. We <laughs> That's we awesome. uh, <laughs> y'all can take a couple of days off next week. Um, she was the she was the 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 backbone of our operation, you know, as as we were coming up and and uh, and really, you know, when Shane's eight years younger than me, so he actually when he got out of school and started working on my stuff, I was out working in the construction field, and and uh, so he was at the shop working on stuff, and that's what he's done, and and really, really. You know he's really good at what he does. I mean, it's not just because he's my brother, but but you know he I've not we've not raced together on some different areas, and he's really you know he's succeeded in one races with other guys, and so he does a really really good job. And uh, but our mother was uh, Dixie's only about an hour and a half from our house, and one of the biggest races we won one year when I won the championship, um, she was there, big part of it. And uh, she was always at these places and supported it. That was one of her favorite places. And it was just kind of unique because we lost her, you know, five years almost to the day for the other night. So oh. she was definitely on her mind when we were, you know, we ended up winning that race and uh, and knowing how how she would be there supporting us, you know. So that's that was kind of kind of neat and unique. That is truly wow. awesome. A, a great way to wrap it up. I'm so glad that you shared that story with us. Dale, congratulations on such a big win, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. But best of luck. Uh, maybe we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yes, we'll be, we'll be there. All right. Sounds yeah. good. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Dale. All right. See you guys. He, uh, it, it's interesting. He 
talked about Shane or you brought it up because Shane is very, very talented, very sought off after, uh, you know, his talent. But him and his brother, they, they make a pretty good team there, mm-hmm. you know, to, to not run a full-time uh, late model tour and to go in and win shows like they did. That's pretty impressive. And speaking of, he talked about young guns coming into the sport. Our next guest, Lucas Sh- Schott. S C H O T T shot. Like a uh, shot, 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 shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not right. not Donnie. No, not Donnie. That's push start cards. <laughs> That's right. We'll be back to talk to Lucas here on Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tires on MRN.com. Sling and Dirt returns in one minute on MRN.com. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job, our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. From work life to nightlife, from home to the road, your day can take you anywhere. These fast-paced times call for Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. Advanced Comfort is designed to keep up with you, no matter where you go or what you're doing. They're made with 20% stronger denim and four-way flex technology that moves with you. Wrangler Advanced Comfort. Go anywhere, look great, and be comfortable. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. Try on a pair today. Looking for a great spot for an affordable beach vacation or the perfect romantic retreat? Let the Plaza Resort and Spa help. A vacation on the world's most famous beach is sure to help you reconnect with the ones you love. Discover the grand tradition of hospitality and service on Daytona Beach. The Plaza Resort and Spa is the perfect choice for any type of getaway. Book online at plazaresortandspa.com or call 1-855-DB-PLAZA. That's 1-855-327-5292. This is Slingin' Dirt on MRN.com. Now back to Ashley and David Stremme. Welcome back to Slingin' Dirt. Joining us now, he is the Grant Younghand Memorial winner. It is Lucas Schott. Welcome to the show, Lucas. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So your fourth USMTS win, a pretty decent payday, and it was all for Grant. Tell, talk about the weekend and what this win means to you. Well, um, kind of kind of a bummer the uh first weekend got rained out but uh they made a made a rain date for it and uh they made it a two-day show actually so we came back on thursday last week and uh they did two features for grant kind of a tribute to him um i think we finished fifth in that one and then top five from each feature was locked into a dash which put us outside pole for that and we actually ended up winning that so that was pretty cool then we came into uh friday um, had a good heat race, was able to win that from fourth, and it's passing points. So we uh, locked ourselves into the redraw. We actually redrew fifth and uh, just started the race. It was 42 laps. Um, track is pretty big. You know, we're just kind of saving our stuff for a while and just not getting too, uh, trying to keep the car under me. But um, just right after halfway, we took a lead from Derek Ramirez and um, – Yes, we were able to hold off some of the bigger guys, Jason Hughes and mm-hmm. Rodney Sanders were behind me, but um, pretty cool weekend. It, it You should be very proud because yes. I watched a little video highlights, and I mean, Ramirez is out front, and you, you disciplined yourself very well, uh, and and even with the pressure of those other guys coming on, I mean, it was like you, uh, you were kind of in your own race. How big, is this one of your bigger races that you'd say, or the biggest race that you've won? Um, yes, I guess this is the... Uh, I would call this my biggest win. I won the uh, Duel in the Desert last year mm-hmm. in Vegas, but um, this is the biggest paying race for me, and um, I think it's obviously my biggest win in my career. Yeah. And he's picked up the Fall Jamboree. He was the night two winner at the Fall Jamboree. Yeah. So I follow him on social media, okay. and he's been. That's why when you said four <laughs> wins, I thought you got more wins than that. Well, we don't. We don't really follow. I mean, when USMTS is in our backyard, we travel with him and. Mm-hmm. race with him but uh it's hard for us you know my dad owns a little small company and um i work for him so it's hard for me to get out on the road a lot and uh our funds just aren't there for that but 
it's uh it's really fun going to race with them guys as much as we can it, that that's the thing with um when you talk about the usmts do you have like do you have any inspiration of trying to get in a late model or are you pretty happy with the modifieds um after switching to an mb custom this year i mean jimmy's had a lot of talks with us about um getting us into a late model but as i said you know my dad and i just uh we have a little small hardwood floor business and um, the funds for a late model just, <laughs> just aren't there for us. But, um, I mean, I know a lot of people say, can you get you in a late model and stuff? But um, I think it would be pretty cool someday to at least try it. Yeah. I love it. Did your dad race? Is that how you got involved in racing? Um, Back in the day, he tried racing just some smaller classes, like a super stock is what they call them around here. But um, he grew up with um, – family is pretty poor so he didn't get to race a whole lot and he just had goals someday to to uh get his son into racing and once he knew he was having a boy he said he had plans for me so uh, <laughs> he's he's worked really hard and uh gave me the opportunity to do what i do that's awesome that so he had really to been awesome. so he had to been really you know not just proud but excited in victory lane oh yeah i mean the whole family gets excited um mom and sister and brother get to come every once in a while but they were there for the jamboree but they weren't down in kansas with us but you get excited um, you ever yell or anything <laughs> you don't seem um, like the type seem like you're just pretty laid back you seem pretty I, chill that's what most people say i don't i don't really get very excited um when i won the jamboree they were giving me crap because i didn't get on my roof and stand up and yell and stuff but um so i got up on the roof uh <laughs> at lakeside there and showed, showed a little emotion that's good. That's awesome. And I I believe you have one of the coolest trophies in the industry now with that number two. That thing was really cool. Yeah, it's a pretty unique piece. Uh, that one's not going to collect shop. That one's <laughs> not going to collect dust in the shop. That's uh, going to be sitting in the house. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So you said you, you picked up the win at Duel in the Desert. Do you have, are you wanting to go back there again this year or, or what's some of the plans to end out this season? Um, We don't have an IMCA car at this point. Um, we did run the North Dakota tour with uh, one of Jimmy Mars's cars, but um, that wasn't our car, so he has that back. But um, no plans to go back to Vegas right now, but um, I mean, we'll see what happens, I guess. It'd be kind of cool to go back there, you know, uh, winning last year and trying to defend our title, but mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll see what happens. You know what would be cool? Two weeks, they got a race called World Short Track Championship here at Charlotte. They have UMP Mod. Just take a spoiler off that thing. You bring that down here and, and get to run at the dirt track at Charlotte. That'd be, I'd want to get out there someday. You know, <laughs> my dad's always talked about going down to Florida, one of these winners. Yeah. But um, we're kind of in the mix for USRA points right now, national points. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, last points race is down in Kansas City next weekend. So I think we're going to head down there. But. Um, definitely got to get out east one of these one of these years. <laughs> Boy, it'd be great to see you there if you can make it. So your nickname is Cool Hand Luke. I'm just curious where that came from. Uh, I bet you can guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was really? saying, why are you asking? I can kind well, of tell I thought from maybe talking there was like a good story behind it, but I, um, I guess not. <laughs> I don't know. I think just my demeanor is uh, pretty calm and cool and collected, and I guess my dad just started calling me that for some reason, and uh, it's kind of stuck with a lot of people, and mostly what uh, what's my main nickname I have now. So that's good. It fits you. I mean, I can see. <laughs> so uh, you're not the guy trying to wrestle someone in someone else's pit after a race when there's a little altercation <laughs> on the track. Uh, no, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. There's I'll nothing wrong it. with that. So yes. Yeah. The uh, what are some of the tracks maybe you haven't been to that you'd like to visit uh, next year? Oh, geez. Um, is there any one that stands out? I I guess one that I like to go to is like Eldora. You know, you always hear a lot of big races mm -hmm. going on there, but um, I know a lot of UMP stuff happens there. So mm -hmm. um, I guess, like you said, we could just take our spoiler off and run down there someday. But um, just some of the bigger tracks you hear of like that. And obviously Charlotte is a really cool track. Um, but... Did you ever make it to Texas, down to the dirt track there that they have? Uh, I, I think they got some. Uh, What's that? Royal Purple or something? Yeah, th oh. no, the one at the uh, big track. They run a race. I remember Rodney Sanders telling me about it. They get like three hundred cars or something crazy. Oh, wow. 
Um, no, we went down to what's uh, down by Houston somewhere. Um, can't remember the name of it now, but. They all run together after a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm telling you. You go by, after a while, you just go, man, that place that we went and ate that good steak at, you know, and then that's how you remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is, it is very uh, uh, different. Like, I went to a track the other week, and I said, man, I swear I've been here before, but it was just looked like another one to me but uh, that I've been to. But what, uh, you ever done any asphalt racing or anything? Um, no, never been on asphalt. The only all. reason I asked that, because when I watched that video, you were pretty smooth. I mean, it was, uh, it was really amazing because the track was pretty slick. Uh, and, and like you said, I mean, you just kind of, you got up there and you passed him. What, what were some of your thoughts going in right at the end of that race? Um, you know, with, with those guys behind you? Well, you know, we just, we've been racing modified now since I was 13. So 20 now, so racing mods for seven years is, definitely helped me but yeah um you just race with these usmts guys and you just learn from them and you watch them and you know tire management is huge in these long races especially at that track you know it, it kind of took a little bit of rubber at the end but mm -hmm. um just keep my car underneath me for 42 laps and um not wearing my stuff out just plays a huge role in winning a big race like that yeah um you know guys are sliding around and wearing their stuff out, burning the right rears up. And I had one of the best right rears out of the top five, I think. So just I, that's huge for trying to hold these guys off. And if you can just keep your car straight and not burn up your stuff, it mm -hmm. really helps. That's good. Well, you definitely earned a big one, and you earned it in a good fashion. But uh, thank you, Lucas, for joining us, and uh, best of luck with the rest of your season. Thanks, guys, for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. He's just... Cool hand. Mm. What is it? What's his Luke, nickname? Uh, cool hand Luke. Cool hand Luke. Yeah, and you asked true. him how he got that. Well, I didn't know I think, if there was like a story behind. I think in the first five <laughs> minutes we kind of understood. Great oh, kid. I love it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. He he. Uh, I watched a video. I never would have thought. I didn't know nothing about him. Follow him on social media, and it's interesting. Um, you know his his demeanor and stuff. Very very <laughs> chill. Uh, you know, cool. if you're a sponsor, if you're a sponsor, if I had a corporate company, that's somebody that'd probably go. Absolutely. Go have a Well, speaking of a corporate company, we have Tom Deary, the president of World Racing Group, joining us up next here on Sling and Dirt, presented by Hercules Tires on MRN.com. Sling and Dirt returns in one minute on MRN.com. A rough running engine could be suffering from buildup of fuel and oil deposits. Smooth out a rough engine, restore power, and improve fuel economy with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today and purchase two bottles of Seafoam Motor Treatment and get one free. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. From work life to night life, from home to the road, your day can take you anywhere. These fast-paced times call for Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. Advanced Comfort is designed to keep up with you, no matter where you go or what you're doing. They're made with 20% stronger denim and four-way flex technology that moves with you. Wrangler Advanced Comfort. Go anywhere, look great, and be comfortable. Wrangler Advanced Comfort Jeans. Try on a pair today. This is Slingin' Dirt on MRN.com. Now back to Ashley and David Stremme. Welcome back to Slingin' Dirt. You're joining us. <laughs> I don't even know what I was about. This whole deal, hang on. This whole Eldor, you had a birthday over the weekend. <laughs> Didn't even drink but maybe half a bottle. And you have, you, I'm, I'm going to trade you I in here pretty soon. I lost my mind. You yes, can't keep up. Is, you can't keep true. up. I like my sleep too much, far too much. You didn't much. even have, what do they call it, toilet water up there? I you did didn't not. Have that stuff's nasty. <laughs> Anyhow, this guy is going to have to keep up this week. He's going to have a busy week, and it all starts today. He is the head chief at World Racing Group. It is Tom Deary. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you today? Things are uh, outstanding. We are you... are, uh, we're at full guns here in uh, Oswego, New York. I was wondering if you were on the grounds or if you were still steering the ship down here in North Carolina. 
No, actually, our whole team has uh, been here, uh, some people, as long as four weeks. And oh, wow. Most of us have been here now for a week, uh, converting a paved facility um, into a uh, into, into Super Dirt Week. Is is it is everything where you want it to be right now? Heck no, we're uh, <laughs> nothing is where we want it to be. Uh, no, actually, it's we're we are learning with every turn. Um, you know, coming into a new facility with an established event that has a lot of expectations and and uh, our good customers and participants. Well, that's the way we used to do it, or we always parked here. I always plugged in there. I always parked next to Joe or Jeff. Yeah. That's all been mixed up now. So it's a lot of uh, we're all learning together, and we're we're putting the pieces together. It's it's going to be incredible, though. Uh, we were just blown away by the number of people who are already here and set up and uh, joining the beautiful fall in the upstate New York. Yeah. Well, they they have to look forward. There's new tradition starting That's this right. week, and they get to be part of it. But when when this whole thing come about, because last year when they announced Syracuse was done, uh, they said, hey, we're going to have a new facility at, I, I forget off the top of my New head, York. Central New York. And then the weather didn't cooperate. The government didn't cooperate. Well, what what was the whole thing when you kind of go, hey, when was the time frame of, hey, we got to get another facility here? He's probably out in the parking lot <laughs> directing cars. <laughs> Tom does it all. That is for sure. You there, sure. Tom? I think we lost it. Speaking of him doing everything, I have a picture of him in a grader. <laughs> no uh, way. Not a grader, front end loader, in the parking lot at Volusia. It was it had rained, and he's getting it all packed in and doing everything. So he is a man of many hats. I, um, I believe that. And and being where he come from, uh, Rockford, Illinois, obviously his yes. family uh, had that. We'd always go up there for the spring uh, uh a spring classic they'd have trickle and joe Shear and scott hansen all these guys it would snow it'd rain it'd be cold they would still race it was phenomenal uh great facility so he is a man of many hats you're back with us tom i'm back i have no idea what happened there i was in this <laughs> long speech and next thing i know nobody was talking to me <laughs> that's all right well you can you you can continue i was just kind of curious of where when you guys kind of uh, had to decide and go, hey, we got to go to a new facility to put on Super, Super Dirt Car Week. <laughs> and we don't have him again. He must have. I, oh, I'm back oh. now. Oh, all okay. of a sudden, I don't, know, I don't know what's going on up here. There's, <laughs> That's all right. Uh, You're a busy man. <laughs> well, it's uh, uh, the fall has set into the in the great upstate New York here, so maybe it's part of that whole deal. Yeah. The uh, the uh, Oswego was a pretty much of a natural selection because Governor Cuomo, with the support of the state of New York, uh, were pretty insistent that they wanted this to stay in central New York. And this, this historic part of uh, Oswego just made it a natural. Mm -hmm. I, are, I know that, you know, they're still trying to figure out the issue with the government agency that you know, delivers the funds for central New York. I know there's a big mess right now, but is, do you think everything will be back on track that 2017 will have super dirt week at central New York, or do you think it'll be back at a Swigo again? Well, I think uh, we certainly have the state's commitment that it'll be back in central New York. So we know uh, we have a viable option here at Oswego. If they're able to get central New York raceway park built and uh, Glenn is able to find the additional funding, it's uh, that's about a fifty million dollar project. So, and I know the state's only a small part of that. So, there's a lot of work to do from that end. But if that facility ever gets done, the the entire industry will be better off because it'll be another state of the art facility that not only for dirt racing but all the other things that'll go on there. So, we we're anxious for that to get done as well. Do you guys, it, it, with you saying that uh, World Racing Group, you have so many different divisions. When you guys travel around the country, obviously you go to different uh, uh, atmosphere uh, venues, I would say. Do you ever, when you get a call and somebody wants you to put a date on their racetrack and you go, hey, these are the what we have demands that you have to meet, maybe safety, maybe uh, I don't know what it is. Is there anything like a criteria a track has to up meet? Well, there's certain there's some natural ones which are you know you obviously have to have a 
a quality facility that's going to perform well, that's going to be safe for the drivers and the fans. I mean, that's kind of the first uh, first steps. Mm-hmm. Then a lot of times it becomes the economics. Um, mm-hmm. Many of our touring series are not inexpensive shows, so you've got to make sure that you've got the right number of seats and that it's going to work out for both the promoter and, and the community. So those are a couple of those check marks that you have to have as part of that first discussion. And then, you know, then the rest of it starts to fall into place. I know um, that camping spots were sold out within like 26 hours. Are there tickets still left for Super Dirt Week? There is actually uh, the folks here at Oswego have rebuilt the rear, the the backstretch grandstand, which is called the Lakeview Grandstand, which is 6,500 seats. Um, so we've got plenty of seats, 5,000 on the front stretch, 6,500 on the back stretch. So accommodating the you know, drive-in or the walk-in customer for either the Friday night lights or Saturday or Sunday's events is not going to be a problem at all. Uh, yes, the camping here has been uh, sold out right away. <laughs> But it's much like Knoxville or much like uh, some of those other places, the community around the racetrack has already embraced this. And there is people parking, people putting campers in their yards or their renting rooms. It's it's really uh, it's kind of cool to see all that going on as well. And that is neat to see. Anytime the town gets behind it, uh, you know it's going to be successful. Where do you where do you see World Racing Group as as the whole? Um, is it where you want it to be right now? Is there, is there say, um, still work to do? What, I mean, because you've, you've been involved in all kinds of different motorsports. Where, where do you see where it's at right now in the state of it? Oh, I think we're, we're all pretty happy with uh, our touring series, certainly the World of Outlaws, uh, both lay models and sprint cars, with our craftsman partners on board has really been a great uh, – we're in a great spot. We've got great schedules for both those series. In the Northeast here, we are, you know, this is, uh, we are the premier division up here, and that's really where we want to be. Our really focus has been is the creating of uh, events that become motorsports events, whether it's mimicking Super Dirt Week or Dirt Car Nationals or our newest event, uh, World Short Track Championships or the World Finals. That's kind of going to be our focus as we go on is to continue to create big events uh, that, that highlight uh, dirt track racing. I I'm applauding you for the world uh, <laughs> the for, short track for, for the whole world short track championship <laughs> for world finals. I've been I've been one of your biggest uh, sellers to people. I want you to know that because I think it's great for not only a racer but from a fan. They can come in and spend two weeks and see phenomenal dirt racing at a nice facility. Vendors can come down and uh, basically you can see all types of motorsports and what you guys have put together there and it. That's quite the overtaking to be able to do. Yeah, we've got our work cut out for us with the World Short Track, and we know that this will be the first year, and we've got the, you know, a lot of, a lot of education to go on. But the opportunity, uh, a to race at Charlotte Motor Speedway at the dirt track, uh, is is in itself a, it's just such a cool part of it. But then bringing, you know, as we're we're kind of calling it, um, you know, racing's family reunion or and. <laughs> trying to bring all the people from all around the country together of different nine different divisions and just lots of laps and lots of fun is our whole motive for that event. And then world finals, of course, that speaks for itself. It is, it is, uh, it is such a spectacular event that, you know, we just I love it. October is definitely a busy month at world racing group between super dirt week, the short track, the world finals, the banquet, my goodness, how, I mean, you have a team assembled in New York, in here in North Carolina, how, I mean, you talk about it being a family, but how do you make everyone just mesh and able to work together to make this month of October so smooth, let alone the rest of the season? I think part of it actually is we never take the moment to sit back and think about it. (laughs) Uh, It's, it, you, it, you know, maybe in November we'll all start thinking about it, but we do have such a great team, uh, both the, the support staff that we have at World Racing Group, but our event staff that is growing every year and will continue to grow. Um, they, they are just, they're the best. And by the best, I mean we all have passion for short track racing, and that 
that you can't buy, you can't talk, you can't convince, you got to have it in your heart. And we're blessed to have a good group of people that this is their passion. So true. Yeah, it is. I mean, we see yeah, it. Teach I, I think you can see that within uh, everybody that races for you throughout, whether I went to, um, well, I'd seen you at the Williams Grove World Outlaw Sprint Car Race, and it's phenomenal having craftsmen come in. You see different corporate sponsors really stepping up with your guys' program, but y- you connect with I the fans so well. I think I hear David well. talking, but I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, he's a, Did you lose us again? You lose us there? Man, y'all are busy out there. <laughs> He lost us again. But anyways, they... Yes. The, and what Craftsman's done, not only for this sport, but what they're doing for those drivers as well. Um, I know Steve Post and I were talking what they've done for the sprint car guys. Yeah. They gave them over $1,000 worth of tools and, you know, yeah. different things like that. So it's crucial to have a sponsor who not only loves being a part of it, but giving back as well. Well, I think uh, it, it takes everybody from the teams who are very professional to the organization putting it on. Uh, I've seen some film where they're the, a corporate sponsor like that to get involved with a grassroots uh, type racing mm-hmm. is big. And I think you're going to see more of it because, um, and, you know, look, I've been involved at the NASCAR level. It's very uh, corporate, but it's hard to really relate uh, sometimes with the, the, the fan to relate with them. When they get into, okay. like he said, they're just up there at, Sar- or at, at uh, Oswego and they're writing in people's yards and they're everybody's just... Um, gathering around one another same way we go to fairbury the whole town opens up absolutely you can really relate uh with the person walking in the gate to the person on the track mm-hmm. and that's the big thing so uh, i think they do a great job at being able all right to... i'm back here all right <laughs> hey, i was just bragging on when i was at world <laughs> or williams grove how craftsmen and what they've brought to the table of being able to to have a corporate company like that come in and back your guys's organization it's, it has been a great blessing, and they are they are so energized by our fans and our participants because they really are, you know, we're, uh, you always hear the word grassroots, and I'm not even sure I like that, <laughs> but we are, we're, our folks are so real. We're the consumers. We're the people that really do the stuff, yep. and that's what they like, and that's what, you know, that's what makes our sport so exciting is, is we are a group of doers. And I think that you can, you know, just to to speak about the grassroots, as you say, you can go to anybody's working man shop and find their tools, you know. So I think it's relatable for them, you know, for the people in the stands, plus the guys that are actually wrenching on these cars week in and week out. Absolutely. And that's been what's such a good, uh, it's been a good marriage. We hope uh, hope they have the, enjoy the same success we feel we have and it becomes a long-term relationship. Well, hey, I want to thank you guys for what you uh, do. You allow uh, not just for myself, but many others go play and have fun, and uh, I I truly enjoy it. It brought I know I'm an asphalt guy like you, um, but it brought enjoyment back into my racing, uh, being able to go out and and perform. So thank you again for all your guys' hard work, and uh, we'll see you here in probably two weeks at Charlotte. Absolutely, can't wait for that. Uh... Make sure you tune in to Dirt Vision, folks. You can watch the Super Dirt Week from the Oswego Speedway, historic making. I am actually looking out of the track right now, and they're uh, chilling it up and grading it. So that's good because we had about a million rain, inches of rain the last three. In fact, that rain you guys had at Eldora, uh, it all came <laughs> here. It. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You know what a mess that was. Um, Absolutely. I'm we sure, sure do. <laughs> I'm sure you guys will have a fine, uh, fine place to race on. So. Oh, it'll be awesome. All right. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Hey, I will say it is amazing. And I'm going to give a shout out to Eldora's track crew that I was watching the sheep's foot. They had so much rain there. It was taking the full foot, water splashing. And when we got on that track on Saturday, it was phenomenal. It it was amazing. And I think until the until the bottom fell out until the rain. But (laughs) it is amazing at what uh, those guys are doing. Not only there. Probably the same thing there at Oswego. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they are into it. So. Well, while we're talking about the Northeast and modified racing and all that, um, New England Auto Racing Hall of Fame announced their inductees. I just want to go through them real quick. You'll actually know some names on there. Really? Um, Ken Butchard, Randy oh, yeah. LaJoy, Jerry Marquis, Noki Fer- Ferrono. I probably jacked that Say pretty that 10 bad. Times. No. Ricky Craven, M- Moose Hewitt. 
Jackie Arute Jr., and Dwight Jarvis. Wow. So congratulations to those I'm guys. I'm feeling old because Randy LaJoy is getting inducted into a Hall of Fame. So. <laughs> I no. thought you were going to say that about Ricky Craven. <laughs> Ricky Craven. Ricky Craven's a great guy. So, <laughs> but uh, Anyways, make sure you turn in Dirt Vision. I know I want to watch it, so you better get that going uh, this weekend because it's going to be uh, – Definitely a lot of history being made being at Oswego, and I think it's going to be For great. Sure. And so I'm looking some... forward to having the winner. Hopefully, we'll come on our show next week. Yeah, absolutely. What's your prediction? It's hard to go against, you know, Shepard, uh, Freeze, and any of those guys. They're just, when they run around the country, I mean, yeah, Phelps, any of them. This is a track that has never happened before. I don't care. So... Them guys run on so many different racetracks. My ultimate, and pit stops my ultimate, are a variable. My ultimate favorite pick would be Buckeye Bullet. Oh, yeah. Dave I Blaney. forgot he was going. He that's can get right. it done. He can get it done. He can adapt well. So that's that's who I really want to see that's win. That's who you want to win. But I would Hearn agree with that. Hearn and all those guys. Hearn and everybody. They're just, it's it's going to be hard to beat those guys. It's it's, it's true. Would be cool to see like, on a roll this what year would be in cool to see like series. Tim McCready there racing in a big block car. Well, that's not unheard of. No, but I'd like to see some <laughs> different draw in some different guys. So, but anyways, uh, it, it's it's going to be really great to watch. Um Obviously, there's uh, uh, some other racing going on. Still, again, uh, get out there. Go to your local tracks. They're not open very much uh, the rest no, of this year. No, unfortunately, we're, we're at that season end soon. Yeah, so if you're at Super Dirt Week, please tweet us your pictures since we can't be Eldora, there. Eldora. Eldora really screwed you up. I'm sorry. I apologize. I work <laughs> on the air. Something there has jacked you. It's all the carbon monoxide from all those toter homes parked so close. Thank you guys for joining us. Tweet us at Sling and Dirt. <laughs> this has been Sling and Dirt with Ashley and David Strimmy. Listen every Tuesday at 11 Eastern on MRN.com for more news, interviews, and opinion from dirt tracks all over America. Sling and Dirt is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.